this morning, again, I want to cover the subject matter of hope, help, and healing. How many believe God is our very present help in the time of need? We've been sharing with you on this subject matter, and I believe it's just where God has directed us for the first part of this year to give you direction as you have been probably noticing in your own lives and just from television and news report. They talk like we are in a disaster as far as our economy, but God is our present help in the time of need. The forecast, sometimes forecast, there is no hope, but God is our hope. Yes, Amen. And he is our help. Yes, My question to you, whose report you going to believe? I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Are y'all following me? And so we have to understand that God is our help. God is our strength. God is our source. God is our provider. Yes, and if you don't understand that, if you don't know that, then you're going to find yourself troubled in a troubled time. But the Bible tells me the peace of God surpasses all understanding that keeps my heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Am I not right? We looked at last week in Acts when Paul was in a hopeless situation and he said all hope was gone. That an angel of the Lord stood by me that night and say, don't be afraid. Are y'all following me? So when you're in a situation where it looks like there is no hope, how many know God is your hope? God is your help. God is your healer. Amen. And I've been covering this subject matter for the last few weeks, and I want to uh, continue to uh, cover this area. And hopefully it's helping you to come to the conclusion in the midst of your storm, you're going to have to praise him. In the midst of conflict, in the midst of trials, in the midst of tests. The Bible said there is no temptation that's not common to man that God has not already provided a way of escape. And will not allow you with that temptation to be tempted above that which you are able to bear. Somebody shout, I'm able. Because he's able. Come on, the Bible teaches us that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think through the power that works in us. See, what the enemy wants to do is deflate you and, and, and defeat you in your thought process. Right. The scripture records that we got to bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. Yeah. Are y'all casting down imagination? I mean, on your mind can play tricks on you. Yeah. And you can feel helpless, you can feel hopeless, you can feel like there's no way out and I can't be healed from this or this sorrow, but God is your present help. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. In Psalms 33, verse 18 through 22, is, has been our, our theme scripture. It has been the foundation in which we uh, started with, but it's not where I'm going to uh, end up. Are y'all following me? Amen. This is just a starting process so you can understand uh, the scripture basis. I will define hope and help. Uh, briefly go over hope. We're into help right now. Uh, but in order for you to understand that God is your help, you need to understand what hope is. In verse 18, it says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord is on those who fear him. We covered that last week, did we not? God's eyes. other words, if you pay attention to him, he's paying attention to you. Now, we know God sees all. He neither slumbers nor sleep. We know that the people of God are the apples of his eye. Am I not right? We know he'll never leave us nor forsake us. But it's saying emphasis. God is paying direct attention to those who reverence him. Amen. Amen. I said God is paying direct attention to those who reverence him. Sure you Amen. We, 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 we changed around a little bit here this morning. I'm preaching right now to praise because those who want the word are going to come get it. Amen. If they really want help, they're going to get here on time. But if they're still wandering in here at 12, they really don't believe God is a present help. He's a right now God. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Am I not right? And so, so we want you to understand his eyes, his eyes. Chronicles says that if we would seek the Lord, uh, God is looking for those eyes is going to and fro on the earth, looking for those whose hearts are perfect towards him so he can show himself strong. 
Are you following me? So in other words, God wants to show up and show out. He wants to be the strength in your life. But his eyes are on them that hearts are perfect. Amen. Come on. Didn't say your life was perfect. Amen. But you got to have the right attitude towards God. Amen. A perfected heart is one that is completely sold out to him. Amen. One that is mature to know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. One that seeks God. Are y'all following me? Yeah. One that acknowledges God prior to right. getting in the problem. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall what? So the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him. Are y'all with me? Yeah. On those who hope in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death. That's your healing. To keep them alive in famine. That's your hope. Come on. That's right. That's your help. So no matter what the economy is going through, you got to believe God's not going to forsake you. Well, I had some tough time. Tough time don't last, but tough people do. <laughs> tough times come and go. That's why I say in the time of famine, because famine can come and famine go. But God will keep you alive. Y'all didn't hear that. So it doesn't matter what's going on in the economy, he will sustain me. Come on, one song writer, David said, I've been young and now old, have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And even though he fall, God is holding him up with his hand. So in the time of famine. Come on, Wednesday night, we share with them in Proverbs. For those of you who don't come to church on Wednesday night, plenty of you. A righteous man can fall seven times and God will raise him up again. Are y'all following me? But the wicked will fall into calamity. Now you say, why are you mentioning that about being on time, being on church? Because God's eyes are on you. And some of you really don't want help bad enough. You're not in that much of a crisis. So what are you going to do? He's going to now crisis. Oh, some have to work and schedule and all those things. But some of you are scheduling yourself to be somewhere else. So when you need help, God's eyes are on those looking to and fro in the earth for those whose hearts are perfect towards him. Amen. He's not holding it against you, but he ain't in no hurry. Since you're not seeking him. Are y'all following me? That bad, he ain't trying to chase you down. If you seek the Lord, Chronicles say he'll be found of you. If you forsake him, then he's going to forsake you. Come on. Did we not read that? So in other words, somebody say in the time of famine. He'll keep you alive. So verse 20 said our souls wait for the Lord. He is our help. And our what? Shield. It says, for our hearts shall rejoice in him. I mean, if you really believe God is your help, you ought to praise him. Those of you that come to church and you act like a doorknob, you don't turn, let somebody turn you. Or a bump on the log, you there, you're present, but not necessary. See, if you really believe, I don't care what you're going through, it can't steal your praise. All right. All right. Come on, the songwriter said, for our heart shall rejoice, not in what I'm dealing with, not in what I'm going through, not what is in front of me, but in him. Anybody read this scripture? In him I live, in him I move, in him I have my being. Anybody come across, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Yeah. 